A very warm welcome to this tutorial series where I will be teaching you how to design and export a scientific poster in the free open source desktop publishing software Scribus. Now I labeled this video part zero of the tutorial series because we will not be working in Scribus here. Rather I'll be talking about scientific posters in general and about all of the prep work that is required before you can start designing the actual poster. So say you want to create a scientific poster to show your research work. Maybe your school or university wants you to design a poster and you want it to look clean and professional. In my opinion, Scribus is the best choice for you to create your poster, regardless of your field, because it offers a compromise between the LaTeX Beamer class, which is a very popular choice in academia, but it has no way of actually dragging elements around on the screen and aligning them. So everything is written up in code, and from that code your poster is then compiled, which is very deterministic in a way, but it's also slightly cumbersome. The alternative to that is software like PowerPoint, where you can align elements on the screen. And Scribus is very much like that, but it gives you additional functionality and additional control that I like very much. However, to get started with the design process, regardless of the actual software, you should first remind yourself why and for which audience you are creating the poster. So are there some specific guidelines that you have to stick to? The size and orientation, for example, might be specified by the conference or by your teacher. In my experience, posters are usually A0 in paper size and mostly in portrait orientation, but that can depend on your location and field, so you should definitely check beforehand. Also, your school or university might have guidelines regarding the design, whether it be logo placement, a color scheme, or a specific font choice. There might even be a template that you have to use, so keep all of this in mind. Before you start designing your poster, you should have a good idea of all the elements you want to include. We can start by taking a look at the typical sections of a poster. So you will most definitely have a title. This should be short and concise and descriptive about your research work. You definitely need to include the authors of the research work that you present. This could be just yourself or you and your collaborators, and you should mark the presenting author, so most likely you. And in an academic context, you should also give the affiliations of all of the authors. Then you could include a short abstract. Now, in a scientific paper, an abstract is a short summary of the paper. Poster, in some sense, is already a very much cooked down, condensed version of your research. However, it can make sense, and I have not seen this a lot, but I have seen this in the past, that people like to even summarize their poster in a single paragraph, call this an abstract, and put it as the very first section of the poster. Next, you will most likely have some sort of background or theory section. And this is very important to set the stage for all of your actual research work. Now, if you're talking to experts in your field, they will probably know all the material in the background section. But still, a poster should be somewhat self-contained. And someone reading it from the beginning to the end should experience sort of a story that is complete and does not require too much additional knowledge. So you do not need to start from the very basics, but you should give a short introduction to the subject. Now it gets a little muddy regarding the anatomy of a typical poster, because what is typical will depend on your specific field. So I recommend that you look at other posters in your field, or say at the specific conference that you will be attending, to get a feel how the posters are constructed and what sections they contain. So you might have an additional section that is called objectives. You might have a section that is called hypothesis or maybe a section that is called methods or materials and methods. These are all valid options depending on the context of your research. Most certainly, however, you will have a very large section containing your results, and that's a very important section, and you should reserve a lot of space for the results section in your poster. Then you might have, or you should actually have, some sort of conclusion and or outlook section where you can briefly summarize the poster and give some outlook on future research prospects. And you're also most likely going to cite either your own or other people's work, and so references are always a good idea. And if you cite someone, obviously you have to give a reference. There's no way around that. 
And for each of these sections, you should plan beforehand what kind of text, formulas, graphs, pictures you want to include in them. And you can collect the pictures and the graphs in the folder, you can write down the text in the text editor, and you will get a feel for the length of each of these sections. However, try to keep it short, keep it concise. A poster really is not a scientific paper, it is a condensed down version of your research. And in my personal experience, poster sessions are usually in the evenings at conferences when people have gone through a long day of talks, of presentations. They're tired, attention spans are short, and even if people are genuinely interested in your research, you want to make it entertaining, you want to make it concise, and you want to come to the point quickly when talking to them. So it's best to avoid long paragraphs and long walls of text. Also, let me mention that somewhere on your poster, you should probably include your contact information, even if it's just an email address, so that people who maybe just snagged a picture of your poster and couldn't talk to you, but are interested, have a way to contact you. So once you have a rough idea about the sections and roughly also about how much text, formulas, graphics you want to put in each of them, you can draw up a rough sketch of your poster. And so I start by sketching out the shape of the poster. Let's say we go with portrait orientation here. And then we start by putting in the title. So I'm putting in a little block. And I put in the title here. And we can also include the authors and their affiliations in this block. For the main content, I like to divide the poster up into columns. And for portrait orientation, I think two to three columns works well. And for landscape, three to four columns works well. So let me divide this up into three columns here. And again, this is just a very rough sketch, does not need to be pretty. And say I know that my, my background, my, my theory introduction, whatever you want to call it, um, is about a sixth of the total content. So I can block about one half of the first column for the background, which is maybe some text, some formulas. And I, of course, like to put it at the beginning. Say then we have Another section that is about as long about the methods that we used. And we put in some text, maybe a picture of some lab equipment or something. And then we come to the results section. And this will most likely be the largest section. Say for us, it's uh, the whole of the second column and even a little more. So we block the whole of the second column for results. We have some text. We have maybe a graph indicating some of your findings, some more text, and maybe in the third column, another graph. Then you have a conclusion and or an outlook section here. This is usually not that long, so maybe some bullet points here. Bullet points are in general very good to break up long walls of text as they are more engaging to read. Then maybe you want to put some contact information here. You can put a picture of yourself on the poster, maybe your affiliation and email address. You can put a QR code to your personal homepage. You can put a QR code to some research paper that is relevant. And don't forget to put your references. And now we totally forgot about the university logo that might even be a requirement for you to include. So maybe we can put the university logo here and maybe we can put the Institute logo here in a symmetric way to the left and to the right of the title. And I think that will look pretty clean. This is obviously a very rough sketch and designing a poster is very much an iterative process. So things will shift around. When you design the actual poster and put stuff into your software, you will find that some of the paragraphs or some of the sections are shorter or longer than anticipated and you will have to change things up accordingly. But it's good to have a starting point, and this sketch provides a good starting point for you. Now, before we open up Scribus and start designing the poster, we still need to decide on two things, which is fonts and a color scheme. Now, regarding fonts, uh, there might be some stipulations by your university. Uh, you might be required to use a certain font. Um, if not, I generally recommend you choose a serif and a sans serif font that go well together. 
but not more than that. And if you want to have LaTeX equations or just LaTeX elements in general in your poster, I strongly recommend you pick a font for which there's a LaTeX package, because this makes things much easier. And then just make sure you have the proper license to use the font in the specific context. So I'm using the Quattrocento font, which comes with a serif and sans serif version. And there's also a LaTeX package for it that I've installed on my computer. And so I'm ready to go in that regard. Regarding color schemes, again, your university, say, might require you to stick to a certain official color scheme. Maybe you have uh, graphs or plots in a paper that you want to reuse when that come in specific colors. And so it might make sense to use these colors as the general color scheme of your poster. Maybe you're completely free to choose a color scheme. And in that case, I like to get inspired by websites like Coolers and browse the available color schemes there. And then pick one that I really like and that is fun to me. In general, I recommend uh, to pick a primary color, maybe something rather dark, like dark blue, and then a very light version of that as a background color, say a very light blue. And it can make sense to then have an intermediate tone of the same color between these, some medium blue, say. And then I like to pick an accent color. So if your, my primary color is dark blue, a good accent color would be orange, for example. Um, and it is also useful to have a lighter version of the accent color as well. We might not use all of these colors in the eventual design process, but I think five colors is more than enough to have you covered and to have a visually interesting and engaging poster. You need to know all of these colors either in RGB or in CMYK code to, in order to be able to put them into Scribus and then we're good to go. And in the next part, we will open up Scribus and begin the actual design process. So we'll see you there.